Mutations in GraphQL can often look very different from one API to another. If you're inserting, updating, and performing GraphQL operations that change data, you'll want to use a mutation. Since both queries and mutations accept arguments, you've probably used a mutation that looks similar to something like this. Instead of graphical, we can perform this mutation and we can provide all of the different GraphQL variables that are required to make this successful. While this works and is accepted by GraphQL for executing the mutation, it often makes more sense to create a dedicated input type for mutations that accept user data that will be processed and stored elsewhere. Inside of our GraphQL schema, I'm now going to use the special keyword input. This tells GraphQL that this is an input type that I'm about to declare next. So if we give our input type a name and we'll call this add to cart, it's often best practice as well to end the input type with the word input. Then just like we have above, we can take all of these different fields that we were passing into the argument, remove them, replace this with one single input argument, and we'll give this the name of add to cart input. We can also make this non-nullable. And if we update our type to now include all of these different fields, then further on down inside of our mutation input, instead of destructuring all of the different arguments here, we can simply destructure input, and then we can pass that along to whatever we are using to process and store our input values. If we save this and go back to graphical, we can then update our mutation to accept the one input argument. Now, if we run this, this will be successful. In this example schema, if we wanted to create a new input object type that was called update cart item input, because we are updating an existing item, we can now tell GraphQL that some of these fields can be nullable. So where we have our name, price, and the quantity, we can specify these as nullable. This means we can only provide the values that we want to update instead of the GraphQL variables. One limitation of input types is that these must be of a set structure. You can't use something like GraphQL union types as you would with a query inside of input types. There is an open RFC for input objects, and hopefully that will come soon so we can make use of that when working with input types.